I want to preface this video by saying, though I'm using Master Duel footage here, and I talk about Master Duel, this video is about the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, and Master Duel and the OCG, kind of, in a way, but mostly about the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. Specifically about the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. Okay? We're good? Cool. Enjoy. Konami? We need to talk. It's 2024, and you started this year off with a bang! You made an incredibly interesting event where each player had 2,024 life points to celebrate the new year. But you forgot that this is Yu-Gi-Oh! And in Yu-Gi-Oh! there are hundreds of cards that easily do immediate burn damage. So in what should have been a fun and interesting event where people had to find ways to cheat out some burn damage, or maybe gain life points with cards like Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood, we had an event where you got FDK'd every game or got burned to death at the start of your next turn by Vanquish Soul. And the only thing you would have needed to do to make this event fun was either limit any card that damages the enemy's life points as its effect, or just ban a couple of them. Like, if Chain Energy was banned and cards like Tremendous Fire, Poison of the Old Men, Satellanite Alsam, and DD Leonidas were limited, this event could have been so much more interesting. Just naming a few, of course, but a mass limit in this event would have made this way more fun and forced your players to be creative and interact with each other in new and interesting ways to finish those life points off as quick as possible. Players are great at breaking systems, so the burn decks and FTKs would... They'd, they'd still exist. 10 billion percent, they'd still exist. But it would take actual brain power and a bit of luck, and not just... Normal summon? Effect? 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 GG? But this was just a try or duel gimmick event, nothing too serious. Not like it was the YCS or anything like that, so chill out, Toxics! Well, you are absolutely correct. I'm not mad at all, actually. I'm just confused as to how you make an event like this and put little effort into making sure both people actually play the game. Well, if they limited the cards, then it would just be normal Master Duel with less life points. Yep, you're probably right. And that's, again, why I'm not actually upset. This event was just a fun little gag. But it does highlight a problem I have with the Yu-Gi-Oh! game as a whole. Yu-Gi-Oh! kinda sucks! Cards go unchecked for way too long. Part of that is because with the TCG, Konami prints these best cards at the highest rarity so they can make the most money. Because if they're high rarity, they're harder to find, which means people will buy more boxes. And because these cards drive up the player's desire to buy a pack or a box of cards, banning the cards would make that product immediately less valuable or wanted. So these cards stay untouched for way longer than they have any reason to be, making the game stale and repetitive. And in a TCG, or really any game for that matter, a repetitive experience is a bad experience. So to fix this, I believe we should have a new ban list every month or so. And this ban list should specifically target the most played cards or strategies. Whoa, what a dog shit take! Hold on, hold on, no, okay, okay, no, hear me out, hear me out. I completely recognize there are major issues with that statement. So let's put the SP Little Knights away and stop throwing your deck boxes at me and just let me explain. To quell Konami's and your worries, I don't think we should be outright banning these cards with a monthly ban list. I think banning should be the absolute last line of defense against cards that see way too much play and allow other strategies to achieve things that they were not meant to do or just completely invalidate the majority of other strategies. Well, at least not without major restrictions. So we won't be banning them, we just make sure they're in the right spot. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of small to large scale events every single month. Konami can take a look at this data and implement limits and semi-limits on strategies and cards with a majority play rate, reducing the play rate of a deck without actually killing it or forcing the players to adapt to a new way of play that could be even better than it was before. It just took you looking at it from a different perspective to realize that. Then maybe after six to eight months of a strategy being out, we can either fully kill it off or make it even better by changing the restrictions on the cards they hit. Should cards be hit within the first month of their release? No, absolutely not. Maybe not even within the first two months of their release. Not unless that card is a legitimate issue. We need to give players time to learn about and test these new cards. Counterplay will be developed within time, but our goal should always be to have a diverse format where strategies don't just play the exact same cards. I'm mainly referring to the simple Spoils engine, Horus engine, as well as Promethean Princess and SP Little Knight here. Those cards can be put into practically any deck right now, and doubly so for the Fire Attribute decks. And at the time of recording this, pre Fire and pre Populous, the Sinful Spoils engine is 687 Canadian dollars. Now slap that, as well as SP Little Knight who costs 165 Canadian dollars and is usually run at 2 in a deck, and you can see how Yu-Gi-Oh! becomes a paywall to play the best decks. And this is another reason why I think a frequent ban list would be better for the game. By lowering the amount of these cards that a person can play, 
the price for them will also drastically decrease. And by having a frequent ban list, I hypothesize that the prices for cards will always be lower because the threat of them being banned will always be, or being eliminated or just reduced will always be on the horizon. So this would allow more people to use them while also allowing people to develop new strategies by just making the cards cheaper in general. On the topic of pricing, the way Konami prints cards in the TCG compared to the OCG, well, it's outright scummy. It is a cash grab at best. If you don't know, the long story short is that in the Pokemon TCG, One Piece, Weiss Schwartz, Digi basically just any other card game really, cards are printed at multiple rarities within the same set. But in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, cards are printed once, maybe twice in a set, with the second rarity being the highest available rarity in the set. So of course, having a ban list this frequent will make it less likely for people to want to buy a set to pull these chase cards, right? Well, no. If you're not banning them, but instead limiting them and printing them at multiple rarities or even multiple arts or full art type deals, people will want to open these sets, and by frequently touching on certain cards, players will be more incentivized to go back to older sets to get cards from there that can assist with their current strategies, therefore increasing the longevity of those sets. Also, by having cards at multiple rarities or arts, pulling individual packs becomes a legitimately useful and enjoyable thing, rather than just a way to maybe find Kashira or Bistial or Tier Limit singles like in Darkwing Blast. Which aside from the rarity collection, Darkwing Blast was literally the last Yu-Gi-Oh set that opening a pack could assist anyone with literally any strategy. And I really want to reiterate this point. These cards would not be getting thrown into solitary confinement for years, and it would not be hitting tons of cards. Only a few at a time. Konami could have a team look at the data and decide whether it's okay for these cards to come in and out of the format based on what strategies people are running. Hopefully they'd be gone for no more than a few months at most until new strategies appear. Then this card can come back into the game without making a strategy as interweavable and strong as they once were. Um, so how would a monthly ban system work? As you said, there are hundreds of events each month. Well, the ban list could be released on the first Monday of every month or two, ensuring tournament goers have time to prepare before their next major tournament, and by having it on the same day every month, we could, as a whole community, all come together to be excited for our little ban lists. What's getting hit this month? February 2024 ban list predictions. Things like that. It would be amazing, both for the community in a content sense, but even more so in just a communal sense. We would all have something to look forward to within the game, rather than just praying a ban list could fix our personal grievances with the current format. But let's go back a bit so I can show you just how scarce these ban lists are. The final ban list of 2022 came out on December 1st. The next ban list was in February of 2023, then June, then September, and then January 1st of 2024. Only 82 cards have been touched from that December ban list to today, seven of which affected a card more than once, making a total of only 64 unique hits, as well as an errata of Ancient Fairy Dragon. And funnily enough, about 15 of those hits were to tier limits, and that deck is still playable today. God, I hate Visas decks, please stop. But these ban lists happen after Konami spends months gathering and compiling data, rather than just looking at the information as it is sent to them and changing things based on what the players are doing in the present moment. Konami bans the cards that make Yu-Gi-Oh impossible, and not the cards that make the money. So what I'm trying to achieve with this is a ban list that changes the format to allow new archetypes and strategies to take the stage, rather than neuter any concurrent strategies and issues, as well as create a new method of selling that makes Yu-Gi-Oh more open to new players, while further incentivizing current players and collectors. But I think instead of doing it at only a few major points in a year, we should hit these cards slowly over the course of several months as necessary. That way the game changes in meaningful ways, and doesn't alienate a portion of the player base who aren't enjoying the current format. It also wouldn't kill any person's fun with the current format, because these cards aren't going to be unplayable, just played at a lesser amount. Meaning they can still play their strategy, they'll just need to tweak it a little bit. Okay, but a ban list every month would be so hard to adjust to. Well, Master Duel has a ban list every month. Though that game is online and if the ban list affects you, you'll know it because you won't be able to play that deck. Though I will say that in Master Duel, you can easily play 10 to even a hundred duels in a day if you're really determined or bored. Whereas at events over the course of a month, you typically play less than eight rounds a day, so that would be way less time being able to play certain decks or formats, and obviously that could be quite irritating and unfun. Just not having the time you want to play the deck you like. So maybe not every month, but I really don't think it would be too big of an issue. Maybe we could have one every two or three months. But if we aren't doing one every month, then I think we should have major ban lists every two to three months, and one minor ban list in between the major ones. That way the game can feel truly fresh with new cards and strategies having time to take the spotlight. 
I do just want to say, a card should probably not be restricted more than once within three ban list releases, unless the situation around it is really, really dire. But cards should easily be able to be brought back off the ban list more than just once every three ban lists or so. Like, you could easily do li from forbidden to limited to semi to unlimited, or forbidden to limited to unlimited, super easy within just two ban lists, right? One, forbidden to limited, the next one, limited to unlimited. That, that's really not an issue. But banning cards is difficult to do because... It's, you don't know how it's going to really turn out. And as for another way to keep up with the ban list, as well as generate excitement, would be in the same way that Konami does release videos, showcasing the new cards within a set, they could create a new video talking about the current ban list. Even just a short video showing off each individual card within their category of forbidden, limited, semi-limited, and unlimited, as well as continuing the current images Konami already releases to showcase the ban list across their social media. Then we could have a little card with the set's art and a QR code in each structure deck or sealed box that would bring you to the YouTube channel or Forbidden and Limited List website. That way, anyone picking up the game for the first time, or getting back into it, can simply and easily get up to date on whether the cards they own are playable. And just like that, BAM! Content. We're now generating revenue for the brand through their social media. We can create spokesmans or even bring content creators in as Konami partners to talk about the ban list and showcase it. Then we could leave a link to the current up-to-date ban list in the pinned comment or the description. And like I said, we'd really only want them to be interacting with a handful of cards each list, and each decision would have to have its own reasons, mainly to lower the play rate or consistency of the best strategies in the format. For example, taking away Fenrir if Kashtera was at full power, or semi-limiting Welcome Labyrinth or Big Welcome Labyrinth, or hard-limiting Transaction Rollback, knocking Fire King Sanctuary down to two, or limiting Wanted Seeker of Simple Spoils and semi-limiting the Abel Star the Black Witch. Nothing to outright change the format, but to just lower the overall power level of the best decks. I think the goal should probably be to interact with maybe 7 to 10 cards per list, and again, just changing them in minor ways based on a strategy or individual cards play rate. Then, aside from these 7 to 10 cards every monthly list, maybe every 3 or 4 months, we have a format changing ban list. Something big. Let's knock these topping decks down more than just a few pegs, and give some other strategies a real chance to shine. We could accumulate data and see what hits matter before even making these decisions. It would be a brilliant way to balance the game efficiently and just make it easier for everyone. Or, you know, you could merge the TCG, OCG, and Master Duel ban list and just release all the product out at the same time across all three things. But what do I know? Konami is a company that does... well, they do Konami things. If you agree with me, or if you think that this is a horrible idea, let's talk about it in the comments. But rather than just arguing, let's discuss this in a civil manner. This is just a little thought experiment, and I'm just a guy with ideas and voices. I'm not trying to change a worldview or anything like that. Well, not with this video, but with the one in the top right corner, I do hope to change your perspective, at least a little. So if you haven't seen that video before, give it a watch, let me know what you think. Thanks a bunch. So with all of that being said, thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you've all had a wonderful day. And if you haven't, there's always the rest of your day, there's always tomorrow, the day after that, so on and so forth. Things don't get better unless you let them, so give yourself time, and things will improve. I promise. Take care of yourselves, everyone. John.